Good morning, friends. Welcome. Um, my name is Keith Hartzell, and I'm so thrilled to welcome you to Grace Anglican Church in our time of worship this morning. We have a new bulletin for you. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand and someone will raise a bulletin down to you, like this young man right here. Um, this bulletin will guide you through the service, but it also has announcements that you can take home, what's going on, what's happening in the life of our church. Um, and then um, uh, we have all the scriptures listed in here so that you can look at them through the sermon as we study the word of God together. So as we, um, as we travel through the month of November, we are sort of preparing our hearts for the beginning of Advent. I don't know how many of you are getting ready for the Christmas season. I know that the stores are ready already. Um, it's Christmas everywhere you go in the stores. And so we also are starting to think about the Advent season when things start to turn to purple and we start to think about uh, the preparation and the coming of the baby Jesus and the King. So um, as we worship the Lord together and as we start to move through this, uh, the remaining Sundays of this, this season that we're in, this liturgical season that we're in, um, we're going to uh, complete our sermon series, which is on how the unworthy become worthy, um, which we've depicted here with this image of Jesus sort of lifting Peter up out of the, the sinking water, uh, the water that he was sinking in. If you remember that story, it's the idea that, that Jesus makes us worthy. Um, Jesus is the one that lifts us up out of our unworthiness. So as we begin our worship service this morning, let's stand together for our opening processional hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And praying together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, you may be seated for the reading of God's word. Reading from the prophet of Malachi. Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the prophet or keeping his charge or walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubborn. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness, shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall, you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb, for all Israel. Behold, I will send you, Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest they come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's pray Psalm 98 together responsibly with the pulpit side of the room beginning on the first verse and the musician side of the room responding on the even verses. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his own right hand and with his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord declared his salvation. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and truth for the house of Israel, and all the ends of the world have seen the salvation of our God. Show yourselves joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Sing, rejoice, and give thanks. Praise the Lord with the heart. Sing the heart a song of thanksgiving. With trumpets also and horns, O oh, show yourselves joyful before the Lord the King. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, around the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he has come to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world, and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Second Thessalonians 3, 6 through 16. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. 
but with the toil and labor we worked night and day that we may not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not, as, not busy at work, but busybodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, see that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And some of you, they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a head, hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Seated, and our children are invited at this time to go with Miss Dawn into the children's ministry 
and they'll come back to us at the time of the offertory. Yes. Hello. Uh, good morning. It's a privilege for me to be able to share God's word with you. Uh, today we are going to focus on Luke chapter 21. And then the first hour of this, we'll spend one hour going over Revelation. <laughs> and then we go through all the possible views on millenniums. And then we come down. So we focus on this uh, few verses here. When we look at uh, Luke 21, it's happening in the last week of our Lord Jesus' life. It's actually on Wednesday, and on Friday he's going to be crucified. He is talking to his disciples and talking about the future. So they're asking him, okay, what's going to happen to us? He's saying, don't, don't be terrified, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to the world. And then Jesus starts telling them about the end times. So the disciples thought that Jesus will come, conquer the Rome, establishes his kingdom, and Rome will be gone, and they go back to David's time. But Jesus is talking about a different future. We see in verse 5 and 6, if you look at, um, I mean, if you look into your bulletin, you'll see because we follow all these verses here. So verse 5 and 6, Jesus talks about temple destruction, and then verse 8, he talks about false prophets will come, and then 9 and 10, he talks about wars, verse 11, natural disasters, famines, and then from verse 12 to 19, he talks about persecutions for, for, for disciples and Christians. So I want to take us through all these events, and then I want to come back again and point out a few very important things Jesus says here because they're very key for us. So the first thing, verse 5 and 6, he talks about the temple. So we know Luke was written around 85 AD and the temple was already destroyed by them back in 70 AD. So this is not a prediction for them nor for us. It's more like a um, reflection. So Jesus is talking about uh, the temple destruction, and then Jesus is point, trying to make a point here, saying that something, um, because they're looking at temple is great, is magnificent, and rightly so, it was really, really good. But Jesus is saying that the human achievement and all these religious will come to end because he is the true temple. I'll get to that later. And then he says, as, as you just heard, the day will come when there will be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And we know that if you go to Jerusalem right now, there's not even one stone left because it was covered with gold. They put a fire on the temple, all the gold melting. So for them to get all those uh, gold out, they had to actually virtually get all the stones apart. And that's, that's what happened. And then verse 8, he talks about false prophets. I was Googling that. I realized, I mean, I couldn't believe it. From 1800 till now, more than 100 people claim to be Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I know a few of them because in Australia, in Melbourne, there are a few of them living there. They're virtually saying we are Jesus incarnate. And I'm sure even in the first century, there were many people that claim to be Jesus. So Jesus saying people will come and say they are me, but don't believe in them. But I think in a bracket, he's also talking about false religions, because this is the act of Antichrist. Because when we see in the world, he is the one against the true religion through Christ, and he will bring us multiple times fake Christ, fake reality and truth. So we need to be careful because Jesus is telling us this will happen and we need to be careful. And then verse 9 and 10, he talks about wars. You know, from Jesus' time till today, in the last 2,000 years, there have been 350 significant wars. Not just small wars here and there. 350 significant wars. And in the last 500 years, 
alone, we had 200 wars. And right now, Russia and Ukraine are in war. There will be more to come. And I mean, Iranian, right now in Iran, there's a civil war going on. Two months ago, the morality police killed a girl, Massa Amini, in Iran. And massive protests began back in September and still going. And 200 people were killed. We think there were more people, but we know 200 people at least were killed. So Jesus was talking about all of these revolutions, wars, and then we know that in Revelation, the book of Revelation, we read that one third of humanity will be killed. And then we have the last war, the big one, the Armageddon. And then verse 11, it talks about natural disasters, famines. And we know so many people died and these things all happened. And when we look at the, you know, the history of mankind, 40, yeah, 45,000 dies each year because of natural disasters. And then persecution. And after all of these things, Jesus says, you will be persecuted badly, first by the Jews and then by the Gentiles. And we know that happened. We just need to read Acts. And then first century, second century and on. Even today, as we speak, people are getting persecuted because of Jesus and their belief. And then in verse 16, he says, you will be delivered up even by parents, brothers. This is maybe not true for some of you, but I work with Iranians online. And they are actually getting this persecution from their family members, the kids. During 90s in Iran, the government killed nine bishops. It was, it, was, it was a dark decade for the church in Iran. Just imagine your nine key bishops were killed in, in about a few years. So Jesus was actually predicting all of this. And then the question for us is, now what we should do? The first thing is we should believe in Jesus because what he said happened. This is a proof that Jesus is actually God because he knows the future. And then for us is an encouragement because we know that Jesus knew that beforehand. And for me is a hint that everything is in his hand and everything is going according to his plan and his father's plan. So there is no temple anymore. The war, we know, I mean, I was researching this again. Throughout the history, up to one billion people were killed because of war. I mean, the estimate is between 150 million to one billion, but even 150 million is too much. Like I said, natural disasters, 45,000 per year, and Christian persecution is still happening and getting worse. And this, this number was really shocking for me. 160,000 Christians die because of persecution per year. Each year, we lose 160,000 Christians. And the danger for us, I think, as you see the title of this sermon, is to focus on these things and miss the point. Because we see disasters coming, we see persecutions, wars, and all of this, but Jesus is predicting the future for us to help us, not to make us fearful. He wants us to focus on him. He wants us to know that he is present in all of this situation. He knows what's gonna happen. He's actually telling them in order so they know that he is with them. So let's go back again and again, look at each section. So we know the temple, he's talking about the temple. We know we do not need any temple. We do not need a building to seek God. We do not need anything rather than Jesus himself because he is dwelling in us. We are his temple. 
and then in the kingdom, when it finally appears, the temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. We know that from Revelation 21. Revelation 21 verses 22, 24 say, And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its, la its lamp is the Lamb. Our focus shouldn't be on the temple or any church or any religion or our works, but on the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Verse 9, if you look at verse 9, the beginning of verse 9, there's another thing Jesus wants us to notice. All of these will happen. Many people would say, okay, this is the end. But Jesus said, no, this is not the end. Jesus is not talking about a specific times or events that will happen and then God's final judgment and that will be finished. When we read actually Matthew 24, the same version of the same story, Matthew 24, 8 says, all these are the beginning of the birth pain. So this is for our sisters. When, when they are pregnant, there's pain, but we know we have to wait for another nine months. This is like that. And it's not the end. We are right now, we are in it. For how long, no one knows. But what we know is that Jesus will be with us present. We need to focus on him, not the situation. And verse 9, uh, the end of verse 9, Jesus says, And when you hear all these wars, do not be terrified. This is another piece of information Jesus is giving the disciples. I so all of this will happen, they're horrible, they're terrifying, but you don't be terrified. The reason not to be terrified is because Jesus is with us, and that's the very reason he's telling all of this to them. So they don't be terrified. And according to God's plan, every single situation on earth is happening. Many people don't believe that. But we believe that as Christians, that God is in control. He's a sovereign God. And he knows what he's doing. And then again, Jesus here, I, I think, is drawing attention to himself rather than the situation. He said, you, you, you are safe with me. Don't be terrified. I'm telling you all of this. You're going through hardship, but I'm going to be with you. So don't be terrified. Verse 12, and at the end of verse 12, we see the reason why Christians are persecuted. Because all of us ask this question, why God led Christians to be persecuted? We are his children. Who would have done? I mean, I mean, I have bars on my son here. I don't want him to suffer. <coughs> but sometimes I realize that I need to let him suffer to get mature, to learn. This is exactly what God is doing. So the question, if you have why Christians are suffering persecution, I think Jesus is providing two reasons in verse 12 and verse 13. In verse 12, Jesus says, you are getting persecuted because of me because you love me. The enemy was here while I was here, but when I'm gone, they come coming after you because of me. They hate me. That's why you're getting persecuted. I mean, Christians are not evil people. They're nice people. At least we try to be. We're not criminals. So why the world is against us? Because we love Jesus and they hate Jesus. And that's the first reason. The second reason, we are persecuted, we are going through persecution, verse 13, to bear witness. I mean, if no one harm, harms us, we don't have the opportunity to show mercy or forgive. We have to have a situation to be able to forgive. If everything is going all right, so how we can show love, how we can show mercy? or how we can be a good witness. Christians are persecuted because of these things and to be witness. And to me, when I was reading this, I was thanking God for persecutions because this is actually the opportunity for me to practice my faith. This is an opportunity for me to show 
have how much love I have for him. This is an opportunity for me to show that I am not with this world, I'm with you, I'm in your group. And he's giving us the opportunity to actually live a godly life, to get matured and be a good witness. I mean, when you look at the runner, I mean, the professional runner, he or she practices for four years until he gets to Olympic. And for that moment, he needs to perform well. For us Christians, we come to church, small groups, read our Bible, think about all of these things. But when persecution happens, when something goes wrong in our life, we have to practice all of this there. I mean, I remember I was listening to a sermon years ago, and I stole this illustration from that person. I don't know who it was. Imagine the father goes to his son and said, look, son, your room is very dirty. I'm going to work. When I'm back, I want your, your room to be clean. And he comes back after work. The room is not clean. He calls the boy and says, what happened? I told you clean your room. And he says, you know, dad, when you left, I meditate on what you said. I imagine how would it be like that if I clean my room. I actually called my friends, they came over, and then we study the word clean. We actually find equivalent in Greek and Hebrew. We study all of that, and then we prayed, they went home. The father said, the room is not clean. I think it's true that we say most Christians are living their Christian life like that. And it's dangerous if you don't practice what we learn, because the time will come that we need all of this. Either persecution, I mean, in America, you don't really see that much persecution, but in Iran, I see so many testimonies and all, so many people are going through this. And you see that, you know, that the, the faith, the, the faithfulness there is different. And then, I was going to actually ask for sing, to sing this song, but the time is limited here because many hardships will come, but Jesus is our rock in whom we stand firm. Like the song it says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is seeking sand. So when we know that, we don't need to be terrified. And this is how the unworthy become, became worthy. Who could have such insight to the future? Who could ever partner with God Almighty in His holy plan? Who could have ever these promises? Who could have these assurance? Or who could have this hope and faith in Jesus? No one, no one was worthy. But we are worthy now because of Jesus. By grace, through faith, we are worthy of participating in the holy plan of God and also share in his nature and also be in his kingdom. And that's marvelous. This is God's faithfulness to all of us when we face difficulties in this world. But the question is, where is our focus? On these wars and media and news or on Jesus and what Jesus says? Because I think by focusing on Jesus and walking with him hand in hand, still we, we still we get hurt, but we can rejoice because we know at the end who is the victor. And we're not alone in all of this. Jesus is enough. And if we understand that, we can bear all the difficulties in the world. And there's one, two verses I mean, the golden verse is in verse 18. He says in verse 18, but not a hair of your head will perish. I think if we are Christian and we read this, this is a divine protection. This is so encouraging for me that I know that whatever happens to me, even if I get killed, that's the best thing can ever happen to me because I will be in heaven with Jesus. And I know that even one hair of me will not perish. This is a great, great encouragement for me and for all of us. And then verse 19, 
It says, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. This is serious. This is serious business. I mean, persecution, wars, all of that. This is difficult. We need to endure it. You read the book of Revelation from chapter 6 to 19. All of this is actually Jesus is talking about uh, all these events. It's very, very difficult for the Christians. But he says, be faithful. Have hope in me. Don't back off. Press on. And it's hard, and we need to persevere and endure. And that's what Jesus is saying. He said, endure it. And then let's finish by a couple of verses. Psalm 98, which was read to us. Verse 3, it's in your bulletin. God will remember his steadfast love and faithfulness to his children. Rejoice and praise him. That's why we can praise and rejoice even when we see wars and all these difficulties in the world. Fear the Lord, serve him, and be sure that one day we will face him and we'll be in his presence. Also in Malachi, the very first passage was read to us, Malachi 3, 17 and 18. They shall be mine, says the Lord. In that day when I make up my treasure possession and I will spare them as, my, as, as a man spares his son who serves him, then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This is so encouraging. I could not add the last passage before I finish. I love this, this, this passage in uh, Hebrews 13, 11 to 16. Let me read it out to you and then we finish. Hebrews 13, 11 to 16, for the bodies of those animals whose, whose blood is brought into the holy place by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned out outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Don't neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. We have no temple on earth. Everything is against us. We have nothing to boast about but Jesus. Jesus was outside the camp. This world is that camp. We have nothing to do with this world. They killed our Lord. So let's go outside the camp, be a good witness, and focus on Jesus and be faithful to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you told us the future and you're giving us this assurance that you are with us, present in every single moment of our life. Thank you for the promise that we are going to have your protection and even one hair of ours will not be perished. Thank you and thank you. Amen. Friends, let's stand if you're able and we will reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us continue in prayer, responding, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that though this world is full of negative events, both now and in the future, disasters, persecutions, we can fear not because you are always with us. You live in us. Help us to lead others to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior so they too can stand on the solid rock and be confident in the future. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, King and Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our armed forces who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Mention those that you know who are veterans that we honor this day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick or in need of healing. For Julie, for Paula and Dick, for Koji, Helena, Eric, Janice, Lynette, Chuck, Julian, Elda. Please lift up other names on your heart. We also pray for those who need employment. Stephanie, add others on your heart. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the poor and persecuted, for refugees, those in the midst of war and those on the brink of war, especially Ukraine, Russia, Yemen, Ethiopia and Syria and Iran. Lift up now other countries that you are praying for. Just a country at war with itself in all its polarization and differences in values. Help us. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our leaders, for Archbishop Foley, Bishop Keith, Pastor Bill, Father Keith, Pastor Nima, Father Bob, and all the clergy, lay ministers, church planters, lay leaders in our diocese, for our aspirants and postulants. We pray for everyone who proclaims the gospel at home, abroad and online. Multiply your kingdom in our communities and help us to reach those who are far from God. Lord, in your mercy. Give the leaders of our country, cities, communities, and churches hearts for mercy and justice, enabling them to be wise, walk humbly, and work wholeheartedly with you. We especially pray for our president, for members of Congress, for the Supreme Court, and all who govern our states, cities, and towns, turn their hearts to you, Lord, and transform our country. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up Dottie and Maury in thanksgiving for 68 years of marriage today. Please add your petitions and thanksgivings. For your spoken word, Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us sit or kneel as we confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
confessing together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Friends, receive the forgiveness of the Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Friends, take a moment and greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, Lord. Jesus Christ. So German. He's a Christ. All right, friends, please be seated for a few announcements. Who loves announcements? Yes. <laughs> Who loves announcements? Welcome, everyone. It's so great to have you here at Grace Anglican Church. My name is Father Keith Hartzell, and um, I just want to offer a special welcome to any of you who are visiting with us for the first time this morning. We do have um, a, a guest card we'd love to have you fill out, and uh, one of our staff would love to meet you at the end of the service if you would uh, stick around for a little bit. We do have um, some fun fellowship after this service today right out in the courtyard um, and we just would love to build relationship and get to know each other a little bit better. So let's see from the PowerPoint slide what is going on um, at Grace, what's happening at Grace these days. Who's got the clicker? No one? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so um, we at, uh, have run this announcement for a few times, uh, but just to invite any of you who have on your heart, particularly over this weekend, a desire to reach out and connect with families that are serving, uh, families that have a service member that are that's being deployed or has been deployed, we'd love to um, organize and get folks connected to those military families. So just email Lori Carpenter. The email is in your bulletin. Um, so you can take that with you and send her an email and let her know um, that you'd like to be involved in that. We've got several families that are going to uh, roll up their sleeves and get involved in this. And we're just really thrilled, um, particularly since we're so close to Camp Pendleton. Um, just 10 minutes to the, the front gate. Am I right? Is it just about 10 minutes? So if you look on page 23 in your bulletin, you'll see the different opportunities to connect in the middle of the week with our church. So we have a Carlsbad small group that happens on Mondays, first and third weeks of the month, and you can contact Trish Stewart or Randy Stewart. Uh, the second one is our midweek Wednesday Bible study and prayer group that meets online. You can join that. Instructions are there in your bulletin. And then last is the, um, the prayer chain. Uh, and Trish Stewart runs the prayer chain. If you want to be a, a part of praying for the needs of the church or you have a need you want to send, to the prayer chain and they will keep in confidence your, your prayer requests. Um, and then on the back, a few more announcements. We have, if you are looking for a way to contribute to the church creatively, I don't know about you, but Amazon has taken over the Hartzell family's life. Um, it has revolutionized how we do Christmas. We no longer have to stress. We can sit down on December 23rd and order all the presents for our kids. 
and trust that they will arrive on time. I mean, we just love it. But it means that we spend a lot of money on Amazon. If you uh, spend money on Amazon and you would like Amazon to contribute money to the church, just a percentage of what you're shopping, um, it'll happen automatically if you set it up. And so it's at smile.amazon.com and it asks what uh, organization do you want Amazon to automatically contribute to based on your shopping. And uh, you would select this title, Rector, Wardens, and Vestry of Grace Anglican Church. I believe it says Oceanside. I know we're in Carlsbad because we're renting this space, but Oceanside is the location. If you select that, then I believe Amazon gives how, what's the percent, Lori, do you know? Is it like 5% of everything you shop for? No, smaller. Something like that. So, um, and then once a year, Amazon just writes a check. Um, I think it's February um, of all the percentages for the whole year. And it can be a real easy way to support the ministry of the church. Um, also, uh, moving on from Amazon Smile, we have uh, and are ready to announce our Christmas Eve Lessons and Carols service. Um, it's on the back of your bulletin. It will come up on the slideshow if somebody pushes the, there it is. Um, so I don't know if you've been to a Lessons and Carols. I don't know if you've been to a Christmas Eve service, but the way that the Hartzells love to do it is to engage the kids and to have um, families present some of the stories um, that lead up to the Christmas story in the Christmas Eve service. So we just, we'll, we'll send out some invitations for folks who wanna be involved in these readings, but there's also a great celebration of music. So we're planning on doing this on Christmas Eve, which happens to be a Saturday this year. Christmas day is on a Sunday. It's Christmas Eve service. We'll do it from three to 4.30 p.m. Um, so a nice short Christmas Eve service uh, that in, engages our children, invites them to come dressed up. And, um, and then we'll of course have uh, Holy Communion during that, that service. It gives you enough time to get home for family, Christmas Eve dinner, whatever your, your, uh, your custom or family traditions are. Also gets you home really close to before it gets dark, which is nice. Um, and then you're sort of free to, to engage in whatever happens in your household. So mark your calendar. You'll hear more in detail about this fun event that we hope will also be an outreach event, an opportunity to invite others to come. People all across the country, regardless of their faith background, are looking for somewhere to go on Christmas Eve. It's just a really uh, easy invitation. People want it. There's a lot of demand. People want to go somewhere nice. And so let this be a place that we invite and welcome folks into um, to celebrate Christmas Eve together. All right. Um, yes, so we are verbally announcing December 10, but it's going to um, be in the bulletin and the midweek newsletter this week, this coming week. We are planning a, I, I forget the title, it's like a song. Family Music Fest. Family Music Fest on December 10. There are some flyers, but we will also put it in the bulletin and email it out to you. It will be at Trish Stewart's house. We're getting together to kind of throw a, a Christmas party and sing carols and eat really unhealthy food. It'll be awesome. Um, so verbally letting you know, but we'll make sure that you get it in writing uh, coming up. So several folks at the church are planning this wonderful gathering on December 10. Um, last, Dottie um, has your liturgical calendar. If you connected with her and asked her to get you one, she's got it for you this morning. Seek Dottie out. Um, and, uh, and she's, she's got it ready to give to you. Um, I've invited Bill, who is incognito this morning. I don't know if you realize he's not wearing his Superman outfit, um, to come and give a few announcements. Hello, my name is Jonah Cash. I'm just kidding. Somebody said that to me this morning and knew it would happen. Um, just want to talk to you about an ECG. Do you know what an ECG is? Come on, all of you know what an ECG is. Your doctor makes you take one the minute you enter his office. It's an electrocardiogram. And some of you carry around these little things that connect to your smartphones and you can do your ECG right in your bedroom, wherever you happen to be. I was taking mine when Nima was preaching, when he was talking about persecution. You know why we do this? 
so that we can keep this going, right? Our hearts beating in the right spot. Did you know that every week the church staff takes a few minutes and talks about the heart of our ministry? We do two things really well, mission and ministry. We talk about it every week. Uh, the vestry joins us once a month and we talk about that. And toward the end of the year, we do something really special together as a congregation. We're starting a little early this year to talk about it. It's again an ECG, but it's extreme Christmas generosity. Isn't that cool? <laughs> if you're visiting with us, please forgive me and you'll know why they chose Pastor Keith over here. <laughs> so um, in your bulletin, there is a, a small chart like this that shows you what our annual faith budget is, what our budget to date is, what the giving to date is, and what the difference is. And whenever you see a negative sign in front of the difference, that means we are in a deficit position. That means that um, it doesn't mean that we've spent more than we should. It just mean, basically means that we're behind in terms of our budget. But if we catch up, that's a really great way to end the year, and it's a wonderful way to start the year. In fact, we did the same thing last year. We received all the money that we asked for. We thank God for that, and we were able to start with a really good, healthy bank account so that we could do a lot of things, not the least of which is uh, bring in our new rector. And we are just delighted that this all took place. If we didn't bring in all of that, they would have had to subtract kid by kid and only bring as many as they, we could afford to bring or not bring the goats. So we want to be able to feed the kids and feed the goats, which is really feeding the kids and both because yeah. goats yeah, are yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. So again, now you know why they don't let me stand up very much. So each one reach one is another way that we uh, minister and express mission. One George, George, by the way, was an Anglican. One George per person per Sunday helps us plant churches in San Diego. So we did that and we celebrated that this past week at our clergy retreat. Our church planter was there and we're already talking about planting another church and it's really, really exciting. So we do that with our generosity. So would you please, Start thinking and praying about your gift this year. So that's over and above what you would normally give. Please ask God, what can I do in terms of generosity to really help my church get off on a great start in 2023? Um, finally, this morning, we just want to talk about something that we've been celebrating over these last few days. And, and I found this uh, little note from Private Joseph Summers. This was a note that he wrote in his journal on October 10th, 1918. He was in France and he said, got mail from sister, beautiful day, sun shining. The sky was full of airplanes, never saw so many, just like birds. Have been in line now five weeks, still looking for everyday relief. This was the last journal entry for the private. Because about a month later on November 11th, he passed away the last soldier to die in the First World War. Now, some of you may remember as we were all younger that we celebrated Armistice this day. Do you remember that? Um, 11, 11, 11, 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month was when the armistice was signed. And then later on, it became Remembrance Day, and there were poppies all over the place. Some of you may remember that. In school, we used to get them. And now we celebrate Veterans Day, honoring those who served. I'd like to just take a moment. Um, let's just see how many of us served or how many of our families served. Would you stand up if you or your family served? Look at this. Wow. My grandfather served in World War I, so he may have been somewhere near Private Joseph Summers. Thank you so much for your service. Let's give everyone a hand.
And now, the offertory. Thank you all for your giving. <laughs> heaven we thank you for everything that you have so generously poured out upon us and your invitation to us to join you in your generosity lord take and receive these offerings and tithes use them to multiply your kingdom we pray this in jesus name amen, amen. the lord be with you, and also with you. lift up your hearts lift up the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is your living word from before time and for all ages. By him you created all things, and by him you make all things new. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to pray together. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Friends, you may be seated. It is our custom to invite all who are baptized and committed to following the teachings of Jesus to receive communion with us, regardless of your church background or faith uh, tradition, your Christian faith tradition. However, if that doesn't describe where you're at, or you're coming from a tradition that doesn't allow you to receive with us, we still invite you to worship with us in, in a few different ways. One, you can remain in your seat as others come forward. You can meditate on the things that you've seen and heard. Secondly, as the ushers release us row by row, you can come forward and put your hand over your heart, and that will indicate to me to pray a blessing for you instead of having you receive the bread or the wine. Thirdly, the, our prayer ministers will be standing in the back during this time of moving around the room and worship. 
And you're invited, anyone is invited, to come to our prayer ministers and to seek prayer. They are there ready and eager to pray the prayers of the church for you, to pray for healing or strengthening or encouragement. Our bread this morning is baked by Aliana Hartzell. Um, and then the two chalices have wine. You can receive from the chalice or uh, the individual cups on the tray have uh, non-alcoholic wine. So whichever way you prefer to receive the, the wine or non-alcoholic wine, taste and see that the Lord is good.
Friends, let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving together, top of page 20, or on the screen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Friends, as we uh, uh, stand together for our closing hymn and recessional, just a reminder that this Sunday is Let Us Eat Cake Sunday uh, to celebrate our veterans right after the service. You can go and have a slice of cake and a slice of fellowship. So let's stand together for this closing hymn.